There we go. <laughs> so, hey, everybody. Um, so tonight was supposed to be all about inspiration and like where to find it, but it'll come. I promise. Um, something came up today that made a difference. It's got to catch up. There we go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay, yeah. So tonight was supposed to be all about inspiration, but um, something happened today, and so I thought I would just use that because it's relevant, and it's something we all deal with. <clears throat> so my machine um, was being all kinds of wacky and wonky, and I was sewing the Fulton uh, blazer as I was doing the white and the pink, the blush version. And it just, for some reason, started skipping stitches. Now, I service my machine religiously. And in between services, I keep it very clean because it costs a lot of money. And so I don't want to just, you know, run the hell out of it until it breaks because I don't want to have to go buy a new one that I really love um, because they're not cheap. Um, so anyway, yeah, um, she was just acting all kinds of crazy and... I, I did my normal routine of the things that I do when I'm checking for an issue, and that didn't help. And so I determined that I need to needed to take her in, and so I did. And through taking her in, <laughs> yeah, big time. And uh, in, in taking her in, the of course when she got there and the guy looked at her, he was like, "She's not doing anything that you say she was doing." Um, so. I just wanted to kind of go over some things that we can check um, to make sure, like, you know, on our end, because we need to be responsible for our own equipment and kind of, you know, keep our ear to it and make sure that she or he, whatever your machine is, is um, up to par and, you know, you're keeping them up to the best of your ability. So um, what I did was I quickly wrote down... Um, a list of things that I do and then I also um, pulled up a couple of resources for us because I know we get I get a lot of questions about what fabric should I be using excuse me what needle should I be using for this specific fabric and Schmetz actually has a really good website for that um, it's a little chart and I'm going to bring that up for you guys here just one second That's my husband. I don't know why it's showing that. There we go. Okay. So this is the Schmetz needle guide. And I use Schmetz fairly regularly. The only other ones I use are Class A. And I'll show you what those look like. I like Schmetz because they're all color-coded. Um, and they don't tend to wear off as fast. But it goes through telling you the various parts of the needle, what it's called, what the different uh, bands of color mean and then it goes on to tell you what needles for what types of fabrics so I will put this link actually in comment section so that you guys can use that for yourselves um, and it's just really helpful um, what I have done personally is I've bookmarked that so that I know um, that it's on there. You know, I just have to click on the thing. Yeah, I, I really like Schmetz a lot. Um, I used to only ever, oh, there's a net, only ever use uh, Singer needles, but uh, once I tried Schmetz, I knew that it was a much better needle. So, <clears throat> hey, Myra, sorry it's all kooky. Oh, you're welcome, Lori. Very welcome. So, and then, the other um, website that I wanted to show you all is uh, it's a checklist of common sewing machine problems and I've had this bookmarked as well and I'm going to share the link with you um, 
and it just kind of helps you because uh, some maybe you don't have a manual with your machine maybe you got it at a thrift store maybe it's a hand-me-down what have you um, but it's just a few things that you can run down to see um, and maybe you can you know troubleshoot your own machine instead of taking it in for repair because again um, machine repair is not cheap I paid hundred and nineteen dollars today to get mine um, fixed and I'll talk to you about uh, what that was. I'm also going to add this one here. So there is that. Okay. So let's go back here. Sorry, I'm waiting for it to catch up with me. <laughs> Okay. I don't know why that shrank. That's crazy. Okay, so anyway, yeah, that is two resources that I use that I really, really like. Um, and then I have my own kind of thing that I run through, and it might be, um, there we go. It might be already covered on this uh, website but it's just kind of what's in my head after years of doing it. I also wanted to show you the Class A needles. Um, oh, absolutely, and to keep the cost of servicing your machine down because if you don't ever clean it out or, you know, check to make sure that there's foreign debris in there, then you're going to be you're going to be paying that serviceman or woman to do that all for you, and it, it does mount up. Here are the Class A needles. Um, these I used to get at my old dealer, and she sold them exclusively. She, she blah, 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 excuse me, she really liked these. Um, I really like them also. My complaint about these is that the their the needles are not banded like the Schmetz, and everybody knows that, that stupid number is freaking hard <laughs> to see. Um, somebody said take a picture of it and then you can enlarge it and that's true but I don't want to have to do that every single time so um, but yeah that's that's um, another alternative to your um, like the Amazon cheap needles or the Singer needles or anything else out there these are the two that I know that are good so <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about the things that I do. Yes, that I do know. And also you get like a little coupon on your Class A pack. It's like a coupon. For, so the next time you buy, you'll get a free one. And Na Nancy's Notions, um, that's a really good site. It has lots, lots of like really good notions as you, as the same, as the name would state. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to point out is what needle and thread are you using on your machine? If you are using a cheapo needle and cheapo thread, you are not um, optimizing your machine's abilities. One sec. So, cheaper thread has, it's not um, spun or wound is tight so it tends to have more lint come off of it and as it runs through the arms and things of your machine and the tension discs and everything it deposits that lint as it's being pulled through and so you will have a buildup of lint in your machine um, so that's something to consider I know um, it can be expensive to buy the, the more the better quality thread but in the long run it saves you money somewhere else so maybe if you think about it like that and also check um, I'm gonna add this here for you guys it's hmm oh wow that's really cool Lori says in a maxi makes kit I received a class needle set with every needle you could ever need that is awesome okay let me see if I can find this so this is a website that I use 
um, and it's create for less. And then, of course, there's also WAWAC, and that's another one that you can use. <clears throat> um, so by telling you about those, you will be able to... I have a frog in my throat again. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a problem talking all day long until I try to talk to you guys. Um, you can get better deals on your thread. Um, I know Joanne sells Guterman. Oh yeah, absolutely. Then Dog22 says, if you're using too small of a needle, the thread will pull right out of the needle or the thread will shred. And Lori says, tools and quality products are important to all makers. It absolutely is. There's, um, yes, I love Wawak. Um, there's absolutely a difference. When I first started sewing, um, this was years ago, I bought the cheap thread, the cheap needles, cheap fabric. I had a cheap machine, um, and it, there, it makes a difference. Um, now I can sh I can sew cheaper fabric on my nicer machine with nice thread, nice needle, and I get better results than I used to. But it's still not optimal, if you understand what I'm saying. So check out those websites for those. This mat is going to drive me crazy. For, for specials, because they will often have Guterman. Um, if you're a quilter, you can use Aurifil. Now, I will tell you right now, my machine hates Aurifil. She will not take Aurifil. I don't know what it is about it, but every time I put it in there, um, it just shreds. And that's with the right needle and everything. So I ended up giving my uh, quilting wife all of my Aurifil threads. So she made out like a bandit. Because she it's funny, she has the same exact machine, and her machine loves Aurifil. Who knew? Mine does not. She's, she's temperamental. Olga. Um, so yes, quality needles, quality threads. Um, needles that are not manufactured to specifics. Um, they'll burr. They'll break. Um, they, they will not... Um, they can't take the, the action of sewing. Um, so they'll break faster. And a needle is typically good for up to 40 sewing hours. That's not 40 hours of regular, but 40 sewing hours. I tend to change mine just a little bit more frequently just because, you know, I sew, I go from jeans to Georgette to uh, sweatshirting, so I'm kind of all over the place. And I can't always remember how many hours I have on a particular needle. Now, I, on Pinterest, they have some ingenious ideas for keeping track of that stuff, and I just, like, pff, I, I can't. If you can, do it, because um, it'll save you money on your needles. I used to have a little needle book that I had made. Uh, it just didn't really work for me. <laughs> um, let's see. The next one I would suggest, excuse me, is to rethread and put a new needle in. And in doing that, um, you're going to kind of like reset it. So, I mean, some of us have been sewing for years and some of us haven't been sewing that long. But when we are so used to threading our machines, it kind of becomes muscle memory. And so we're just like, rrr, rrr, rrr. but sometimes when we do that, it, um, it'll, you know, you'll skip a step or it snags on something. Some, you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't always work. So it's always best you cut your thread and pull it out via the needle. Don't pull it out backwards. Pull it out via the needle and um, because you can scrape the lint off of the thread and it'll get stuck up inside the machine. I have done that also, um, and that is something that you can definitely do. Sometimes you can't see them or feel them, and it'll just kind of end up wearing after a while. So it's up to you. You know, you, you know your machine. You know what she likes, what she doesn't like. So as long as you're keeping up with that. That's the important part. Um, also, when you change your needle, if you're having problems and it's acting kooky, um, and you change your needle and you rethread your machine, take your bobbin out, check to make sure it is not all, you know, catawampus and like tangled or anything. Some I've had times where, for whatever reason, I've had to just 
rewind a bobbin because it just didn't wind right um, and then put it back in and no problems bingo it's fixed so um, that's also another tip also I would highly suggest at this point while you've pulled the thread out you've pulled the needle out you've pulled your bobbin out go ahead and clean it out use pipe cleaners um, excuse me use pipe cleaners um, use the little brushes that come with your machine and um, oh, there it is. So use the little brushes, use pipe cleaners, a pair of tweezers um, to be able to get down in the guts of your machine to kind of pull things out. I actually use my serger tweezers for that because they're a little bit longer and thinner at the tip so I can kind of get back in there if there's a big lump of lint. So clean it all out. Um, give her a good dusting, but do not use canned air. A lot of people, a lot of people think that canned air isn't a problem, but what happens is a lot of the time you'll put the canned air in there and it just pushes the lint further back and it gets it stuck into places that you can't get out. And then you'll be paying Paul, the service guy, to fix that for you. Um, yeah, Lori says, when in doubt, change your needle. Absolutely. It's easier to change the needle than it is to spend five hours banging your head <laughs> like why the heck won't this thing so right um, so yeah my third step or tip for myself and for you guys would be are to think about what you're trying to sew through are you trying to sew through something that's too thick yes Lori says it's a good tip to turn the machine off when cleaning it using tweezers or metal Lots of people do that, and that's probably a very good idea. I don't, and don't do what I do. <laughs> I just never think about it. Uh, I used to be a helicopter mechanic, so I don't have a problem with, like, sticking my hands and moving parts. It's kind of dumb, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Amazon does smell Schmetz in bulk, in bulk, and that's where I get mine typically from. Dindog says... <clears throat> They sell those attachments for the vacuum to get into tiny places, and they do. Um, I've tried two of them, and I haven't had any luck interfacing them with my vacuum. So I don't know. I, I actually tried to get a small vacuum to like get in there, but it, I've not had any luck with that. But I know lots of people who have. Um, so the third point was, are you trying to sew through too thick of fabric? And this, I'm going to show you this. So when I took my machine in, I told them that it was skipping stitches, right? That, um, like, to the point to where she wouldn't even put two pieces of fabric together. I'm going to piece here. Um, and so when the guy called me, he was like, so what were you doing? I don't know what I'm doing with your machine. What's going on? And I told him, I was like, it's skipping stitches. And he was like, well, what were you sewing? And I told him, <clears throat> excuse me, I was sewing through Ponte. And I was sewing through five layers of Ponte. Um, and so that's pretty thick. And so because it's a quilt shop, they didn't really know what I was talking about. So that's something to keep in mind. But he was trying to recreate Ponte with, it's like a thin wool-like type fabric. And this is four layers of Ponte. Okay. Can you see the difference? <clears throat> and also, Ponte is a lot spongier, obviously. So, him trying to recreate what my machine was doing while sewing this, yeah, um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't working. And then, of course, he was trying to, he was checking on some regular old quilting cotton, which, because that's what he has. They're, they're a quilt shop, so that's what they have on hand, but... So you need to let them know if you're a garment sewer or if you're a quilt sewer, you know, um, tell them that. And also, well, we'll get to that point in a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, um, when sewing through these thick layers, uh, because this was the Fulton um, when you're doing the collar and the facing piece, um, it gets a little thick. So when you're doing that, what you can do is you need to try, oops, excuse me, 
you need to try, um, you can pin baste or hand baste um, with a sewing needle and you know your hand, not on the machine, and that will, you can try to bring those layers in a little bit um, to help reduce the bulk. <clears throat> now, I'm not a hand baster, I'm much more of a pen baster or a hold it and see what happens kind of thing, but I am trying to um, get myself to the point to where I do pin and I do hand base because when I have done it in the long run, it makes a much, much better difference and you get a better result in the end. Um, number four would be, have you looked through your machine's troubleshooting guide in the manual? Um, unless you've bought your machine secondhand or it's been passed down or something like that or you found it at an estate sale, um, you should, when you purchase your machine, get a, uh, a manual. And this is my manual. And in the back, it has the troubleshooting guide. Troubleshooting guide. So it goes through and it literally tells you how to maintain your machine, which is very important so that you don't have to get to the point of troubleshooting. Just regular maintenance every few hours of sewing um, just to kind of keep her, keep her running, keep her smooth. So yeah, she, uh, the manual has all the troubleshooting. What happens if your thread nests? What happens if it's um, nesting on the top or on the bottom? What happens if the thread breaks? That kind of thing. It goes through all of these different things. Um, wh what happens? Why is your bobbin tangling? That kind of thing. So yeah, be sure to check that before you just call up the repair guy. It might be something that you can actually take care of yourself. Um, I have a little anecdotal story here for you. Lori asks, have you ever used the presser foot tool that is called a hopper, which helps you keep your foot level when sewing thick items? Now I do, let me see, I have that and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about or what Lori's talking about. If I can find it. Okay, so see this little black knob here, right there? So as your machine, y'all, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Faye. So as you're sewing, okay, say you're sewing over. Okay, so it's thinner here. This is, demoing is not easy, y'all. So you're sewing here, right? And then you're going up, and you see how the foot becomes unlevel if you, when it does that. <laughs> Mind you, this is on a machine. It's not actually doing this. So when you get to this point to where it's unlevel, if you just pu push in that little black button, what happens is your foot will level back out, okay? So that you can continue to sew. The other thing I do, and this is this happens for me when I'm sewing jeans, and if I can find a picture, I use Nancy's ruler. Don't tell her. But this is how I do it because I don't have a hump jumper, and if you can find one of those, you should totally get one. But this, I should have put this up for you guys. I didn't even think about it. Okay, I'll try to keep that level. So this is me trying to top stitch the waistband on my daughter's jeans. And because of doing it's on the very bottom of the waistband, so one side one side of the foot is on the fabric and the other side is kind of like on the on the actual jean front so it's like here to here i don't know if you can see that so <clears throat> it was a little wonky so what i did was i just used this ruler and i put it on the other side that didn't fit up against the fabric and it just helped to keep it level and it helped to keep it from dropping stitches so <clears throat> that is a couple of tips. Um, hump jumpers, they used to have them everywhere. I think oh, you can check Wawak. You can check Create for Less. You check Amazon. I don't know. Let's see if Amazon has the hump jumper. Does anybody have one and know where to get it? 
Okay, so they are actually on Amazon. Here, let me show you. So these are the hump jumpers. Right here, Gina Majig, that's the old uh, brand name. And this one is one that I have seen a lot of. This is the one that I've seen on commercials. You know, back in the day, I don't actually watch TV anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, Georgie, I know a lot of people use bits of cardboard too. Yes, uh, Hump Jumper, Gina Majig. Uh, what is that top one called? Clearance Plate Button Read Presser Foot. So there's just a few names that you can look at. So back to this here. Okay. So that is something that will help if you don't have it. And if you want one, go ahead and order one. But just know that there are other things that you could use in place of that. If you take several layers of denim and sew those together, as you can use that as your hump jumper. It doesn't have to be from, you know, a store. It doesn't have to be store-bought. You can totally um, rig up your own um, tool. That's the word. <clears throat> okay, so also, if you've looked in your machine and you, uh, you can't figure anything, or not machine, if you've looked in your manual and you're not finding what the problem is, like, you're not seeing it. It's not under the heading. Google, YouTube, um, there's a lot of information out there at our fingertips. I know that you guys know, especially because you are YouTube users, that there's a, a plethora of information out there. So don't be afraid to Google or YouTube it, you know, and try different word combinations because that definitely makes a difference too. Um, and you might be able to find the issue. Um, and the other thing I'm going to tell you is, is that if you buy your machine from a dealer, like an actual dealer, not off of the shelf of a, a store or something like that, um, and you cultivate that relationship with your dealer, um, nine times out of ten, if you call them and you're like, hey, Bob, my machine is, and you lay out what, you're, what it's doing, he's going to, or she, will say, well, have you tried this, that, and the other? And you'll go, no, I haven't. And then problem solved. So a lot of them are free with that information because they're busy too, and they don't want to get stacked up with things that could take five minutes to fix. So that's just something. Hey, Patricia. At a minimum, Patricia, Patricia asks, uh, how often do you suggest sewing machines, serger maintenance services? My dealer suggests once a year. Now, that's with like, kind of like home sewing. If you're like really cranking stuff out there, you're definitely going to want to do it more. Um, I don't really know anything about industrial machines, so that's something that we would have to look into separately. Um, Olga was not due for her service until March, actually the end of March, but because she was being crazy, I had to take her in early, and I just went ahead and had the service done at that point. But I have been sewing a lot this year, this past year. Oh, you're welcome, Chris. Chris just said uh, they learned that black button theme today from you, um, and thank you. Uh, Din Dog says industrial machines don't have a black button on the presser foot. Got to use a hump jumper, so that's useful news too. And t generally, industrial machines, industrial sewing machines, are pretty much one stitch. They're forward, <laughs> and that's it. They don't zigzag. They don't do any of the cool stuff, you know. So keep that in mind if you have those. But if you sew for a living, that is something you might want to look into. So, um, yes, be sure to use a dealer, have a dealer, cultivate a relationship with your dealer. Um, there is nothing better than having a good rapport with your dealer. It's like knowing the butcher, you know what I mean? When you really know the butcher, you get the best cuts of meat. So the last uh, one I have is if you've done all of that, you've changed your thread, you've changed your bobbin, you've changed your needle, blah, 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 blah. You called Bob. <laughs> now you're like, Bob, I can't fix it. It's doing something. Cause that's where I was at Friday. It, it, nothing I tried would work. Um, I had to take it in. So make sure that you, before you go, especially if you've, 
not dealt with this dealer before because I now have a new dealer um, where I'm at. So if you've done all that and you know you call Bob and you say, uh, hey, my machine is doing X, Y, or Z. Okay, like so mine. I told him mine's skipping stitches. It literally will not sew a garment. It won't make a seam because it just kept dropping the stitches. So you want to find out what do I need to bring in? Do I need to bring my core, my uh, power cord? Do I need to bring my presser, or not my presser, but my uh, pedal, uh, my foot pedal? Do I need to bring um, the, or can I actually, can I bring in the fabric that I was working with so that you can try to recreate the um, circumstances in which it did this thing? Um, because like I said, my guy is a, they're a quilt shop, so they don't sew garments. So he didn't even know what Ponte fabric was. And when I tried to explain it to him, he just didn't get it. And so that's how we had <laughs> this fabric versus this fabric, which I mean, God love him. It was a good try. And, and ultimately he did fix it. She's working like a champ, but, um, you know, let him know, Hey, I sew garments primarily. Um, or I sew quilts primarily, let them know what you're sewing or, Hey, I make leather bags on my machine. That's helpful information, um, for them. Let's see. Oh, Chris is watching from Adelaide, South Australia. Dindog says, once you start sewing on an industrial, you are pretty much ruined for any other sewing machine. <laughs> I've heard that. Um, I, I've, I've looked at a couple, but I don't really have room. I mean, if you guys can see, no, no wrong way. If you guys can see, I'm pretty stocked up for space. <laughs> don't need any more machines. Um, so yeah, um, make sure they know what kind of sewist, sewer, person who sews you are, what types of things you're sewing. Um, be sure to ask them what their hours of operations are. Be sure to, um, find out an estimated time of how long it's going to take um, and how much estimate it's going to cost. And then, uh, let's see, what else? Did I, I wrote notes, guys. I wrote, see, look. Lori says, I wouldn't have thought of asking those questions before taking in my she machine. Just brought, excuse me, just bought my baby lock from a dealer less than a year ago. Oh, Lori, I know you're in love, girl. Um, yeah, absolutely. My first dealer was like, do not bring me your power cord. Do not bring me your foot pedal. Don't bring me any presser feet and the little accessory compartment on your machine. Do not have it on there because she had so much stuff. She didn't want to get it lost or misplaced or anything like that. The dealer here in, um, in the Denton area was like, no, I, I need all of this stuff. I need the power cord, blah, 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 because they work on de several different types of machines. So, that is something to think about. Um, ah, or is in North Carolina. So that is my five things that you might want to consider before you take your machine in. The biggest thing I would say, and this is, and this, just a, I guess a, a confidence thing. Okay. Do not be afraid. Now, if your machine is under warranty, think about that. You, and you're like completely non-mechanical person. Don't mess with it. Let them deal with it. Let them, you know, that's what the warranty is there for. But if your machine is no longer under warranty and you're not, you know, don't be a chicken. You can take this off. In fact, my first dealer was like, oh no, honey, here, let me show you how to take it apart. I completely took apart my, um, imagine serger because a needle got broke and it went down inside. And so I had to take it apart to get the little sliver of needle out. So take pictures. If you're going to take it apart, take pictures, screws. These screws came from this spot. This thing went to this thing. You know, I wouldn't advise like taking arms, um, off or anything like that, but don't be afraid to open it up and look because it could be a stray tip from a needle. It could be a ball of thread or something of that nature. And then boop, you took it out and you saved yourself several hundred dollars. Um, Lori asks, did my service find anything wrong? Yes. 
Now, Olga is three in March, um, and I this past year I've sewn pretty much every single day. The other two years, you know, it was kind of like definitely not as much, but this past year I have sewn nearly every day. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So her timing was off. Just like a car has a timing to make sure that the pistons strike properly at the right time, um, a sewing machine has timing as well. And when it was thrown off, the thread was the uh, needle thread was coming down, but it was not picking up the bobbin thread because it was the timing was off, so it was just not making the connection. So <clears throat> I would have not known how to fix that. I mean, like I said, I did used to work on helicopters, but I don't. It's not the same, but it's it gives me some confidence. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it was all about the timing, and he went ahead and, and serviced it um, at the same time. That way I don't have to lose her next month. Because <laughs> that was a rough three days, y'all, without my machine. Goodness gracious. I mean, I did have my backup, and I sewed several things with my backup while Olga was gone. But it's like, you know, you spend that money for that, you know, that awesome machine, and then she's gone, and you're like, what am I going to do? <laughs> so, yeah. Do you guys have any um, particular tips? Is there anything that you have found um, worth mentioning? Go ahead and put them in the comments. Or does anybody have any questions or ideas or something? Ooh, thirsty. Actually, I have a few. I have my I have my mother's machine, which is an old new home, but its motor is messed up. I need to take it and see if I can get it fixed because that would be beautiful to top stitch on. Um, and then I have a, a beginning, uh, uh, yeah, beginner gen Um I think it was a 100 or something like that. Um, but a lady at church broke it, so I need to take it in and get it fixed. And then I have the Singer uh, Pro Quilter or something like that, it's called. And then I have Olga. But I also have my mother-in-law's old Kenmore. I'm not sure if it works. I haven't even checked. Um, Patricia says, I have a tube of oil included with my machines. Never used. I guess I should oil my machines every now and then. Do you oil your machines? My machine does not call for that. Um but read your manuals, folks. Go in there, and in that maintenance section, it's going to tell you if you need to oil. Actually, let's just go to the, what is that called, the appendix, and see if it says anything about oil. I have my glasses on, so don't laugh. So my machine doesn't even have the word oil in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have machine maintenance, surface cleaning. So yeah, mine uh, mine does not have that. My mother's machine, the new home, it has several oil points, and you actually have to use a lubricant because I have this that I bought. Um because I thought that's what my mom's machine needed, but it wasn't, because my mom's machine is much more like a uh, liquid. This is like, like a cream. I don't know what the heck you would use that for or where you would put it. Oh, Lord, I can't even screw the lid back on, y'all. See, uh, okay, let's go back so I can catch these things. Lori says, my baby lock manual doesn't have oiling recommendations, but my serger does. Um, what kind of serger do you have, Lori? Georgiana, Georgiana says, I oil my machines every now and then. Also, make sure your oil is fresh, not discolored. And that's a very good point. Um, oil can get, um, what's that word, rancid or whatever. Um, and like when I bought my oil, it's completely clear. 
no, there's no tint to it or anything like that. It's white. It's clear, completely clear. Um, and uh, oil when it's, it'll like get yellowy looking. If that makes sense. <clears throat> Dindog says, I recently scored, scored an old Singer 401A for $150, all metal and in great shape. Came with the table, 60 years old, and sews beautifully. Yes, my mom's um, new home is all metal. It's one of the first Japanese versions that had the zigzag on it, um, and she sews like a dream. I just need to get the motor replaced on it. Lori says, old singers and Janomis have oil points. Yes, that is true. The new home does as well. Um, and with an industrial machine, you have a pan of oil underneath the machine that you have to keep at a certain level. <clears throat> uh, Lori's serger is an old white brand. Um, I have an Imagine. Let me look and see if it says anything about oil. Just grab a couple manuals here, guys. All right, let's see. That's for the. There. So this is the Imagine. Oh, Lori, it is amazing. Lori said she wished she had the Baby Lock Imagine serger. Yeah, I wouldn't think so, Miss Faye. Um, it, it's one of those things that they uh, kind of reserve. Miss Faye, do you have the Imagine? I know you said you had the Sophia. Okay. I'm trying to get to the page here real quick. Okay, so there's no oiling with the Imagine either. Let us look here. So I have the an old. Uh, I have this old. Uh, serger overlocker. It's the Singer 14U64A. And let's see. Mm, lubrication 22. And see, I haven't oiled this or haven't lubricated it since I owned it. And that's been a couple years now. Oh, Miss Faye, you'll love it. Okay. Lubrication. So occasional lubrica re lubrication is required. The oiling points shown on the figure should be lubricated periodically. And it's going to give you in here what lubrication to use. So, yeah, it right here shows you the different oiling points. Oh, I can't do this backwards thing. So um, that's very helpful. If you're not sure, open up your manual and check it out. Um, I don't have my Janome manual right here to look up that one, but I'm pretty sure that one's probably not oiled either. Um, so yeah, that's a huge tip in and of itself is to read your manual. Um, I will readily admit that I don't always read it right before I start playing with the machine because I know I think I feel like I know enough about the machine to kind of goof off with it a little bit see what she'll do but I always do read my manuals um, it's not exciting reading no but it will help you in the long run maintain your machine and know what to expect from your machine and that's really important as a sewist um, you know, like a mechanic, you want to get the very best out of your tools, so you need to know how to operate them properly. So that is really it. Read your manuals, um, and then if you have issues, consult your manuals. Go down that checklist, check out that website, make sure you're using the right uh, needle and thread for your project, and, you know, don't be afraid to check your machine out. Don't be afraid to look into it and see, you know, what is that furry thing back there and pull it out. <clears throat> Patricia, excuse me, Patricia says, seems like the later model machines do not require oiling. Wait, she seems like the new machines do not require oiling. I cannot talk. 
and then she wrote latest model machines is what I meant. Uh, yeah, the newer newer models, the ones that have you know less time out on the market, they don't seem to uh, require oiling or lubrication as much as the old ones. But there's a difference there. <laughs> they were all metal compared to what we have now. Um, Dindong says, brother makes some pretty indestructible sergers. And I know, um, what is it, the 1034D? That is a very popular brand. Um, and I haven't really heard too many complaints about it. I know that it's a pain in the butt to thread. Um, but, I mean, I don't have that problem because my, my machine, my serger has air threading. And so does my cover stitch. Uh, Crystal says, many Bernina do. M Crystal, do they require oiling or they do not? Whoop. I was still for too long. There we go. So, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Don't forget to thumbs up, folks. Please. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Does anybody have any other comments or questions? Because that's all I have for you tonight. Okay, so Crystal's saying yes, her machine requires oiling. That's cool to know. Um, that's something you might want to think about when you do go to purchase a machine. You know, do, do I need to do certain things extra um, in order to maintain it? You know, what is your level of comfort with maintaining a piece of machinery. Thanks for the thumbs, y'all. So yeah, um, that is it for me tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any gentlemen. Um, hey, Miss Andrea, Dindog says she has the 1034D since 2002, and I use it at work doing alterations. It takes everything I can dish out. That's pretty cool. Like I said, I've heard lots of great things about it. I'm pretty sure my Imagine would so concrete if I wanted it to. That thing is a beast. <laughs> um, Lori says, you don't have that threading problem like some of us with older sergers. I'm so jealous. Yeah, that that is the whole entire reason why I got my Imagine. I did not want to fool around with that threading stuff. And you have to thread in a certain order. And all. I can't even remember all that. And I do not want to have to pull out a manual every single time. So yeah, that is it tonight, guys, um, ladies, gentlemen. Thank you. I'm so glad you all enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Andrea. This is her idea. So yeah, thanks everybody. I really, really, really appreciate you all watching. And I appreciate you spending some time with me this evening. So if you have any questions or comments or tips for yourself, make sure you drop them down in the comments below, um, you know, on the replay. That way other people can see them and have that information to use. So that's it from me to you tonight. Take care, guys. Bye.